Hello again. Up until this point, I've been looking at types of clue. Uh, the one that had the word embedded in the answer, embedded in the clue, uh, the substitution ones, the anagram ones. But of course, bad news is it's not that simple. And types can cross over. One clue can have different elements from those different ideas. And there are other ones that we'll get to in time. But I just wanted to have a little look at a clue that drew from two different things that we've talked about before. So let's have a look at this. How rapid news developed about good detergent. Seven and six, it's a two word answer. How rapid news developed about good detergent. Now, a side note on this, a two word answer doesn't really mean anything, doesn't change a thing. It's not as if one part of the clue is going to relate to the first word and another part of the clue is going to relate to the second word. You're still just looking for an arrangement of letters that will span those two words. So one part of the clue could represent the end of the seven letter word and the start of the six letter word. All you've got to do is listen to the clue, put the things in order, and then you'll find that you're making two words. But you don't have to treat them any differently. They're not a type of clue. They are just another answer. And there'll be phrases you generally know. There'll be stock phrases or you know some of them will be sayings. When you get clues that have lots and lots of words, you'll see ones that have five or six words in them. They can actually be quite a good place to start because they'll be a really famous phrase. And if you can get the rhythm of the words, you can often find your way to the phrase without really knowing what the answer was, without really sort of breaking the clue down. But generally, if you see a two word answer like that, it doesn't really mean anything. You're still going to treat it exactly the same. So with this one, how rapid news developed about good detergent, you're looking for definition. So you're thinking how rapid or how uh, a seven and a six, you know, a, a two word phrase for the word how unlikely through means of something like that maybe, but it seems unlikely. How rapid news is unlikely, how rapid news developed conceivably something about I don't know, 24 hour news, outdoor broadcasting, something like that, potentially. But it's more likely looking at the other end. Good detergent, about good detergent. Good detergent, it seems less likely because what makes a, a good detergent? That's a sort of qualitative statement and that would be some sort of like brand loyalty from the crossword setter, which would be really strange. So, and also we've been looking at how good can function as a G, good's quite, you know, it's, it's a likely word to substitute for something. So it comes down to detergent as the definition. So then you have to look at the other end, start from the other end generally, um, for substitutions or functionality within the clue. So how, once again, it's still quite a difficult word to substitute before, uh, substitute for what just means how on its own, a, a, that would represent a part of a word. How rapid, same problem, can't think of anything that would represent that. How rapid news, still, you've got the same problem as with the definition really. So you have to start to think there's something else going on here. And it revolves around this. Developed, if you remember the anagram um, episode, I was talking about how anything that indicates change or transformation, development is a type of change. So you know you're looking for a reorganization of something. About good is four and five, that's nine. You're looking for 13. This, four, five, you've got 12. And you think, okay, I've got 12 letters. I need a spare. You remember that the good is a G. So about good, how rapid news developed, made an anagram of about good, so around this single letter, meaning detergent. Now, the one thing you can be sure of this is very specific. If this said developed after good or developed before good detergent, the G would then be either at the end if it was after or the other end if it was before. So if that was developed before good, this all gets put before the G. You know what I'm saying about just create a pattern of letters that spans the two words. Don't worry about the breakdown of the words. But because this is about good detergent, you can be absolutely sure that that G is not at either end. I know it's not much of a help, but it's little things like that where you think, okay, so this G is not the start of the seven letter word or the end of the six letter word. So it's not something ing and it's not g something. It's all you've got to go on, but it, the stuff like that can really help just start to build up a picture in your head. 
And then it's just a question of, of breaking down the anagram, of take, taking that to pieces. And you end up, eventually, depending on how quick you are with anagrams, with washing powder. There's your G. Everything else, how rapid news is developed around the G. And that's a really simple combination. So you've got a bit of an anagram, you've counted your letters, you've realized you're one short, and you go looking for the other one. This could also be, you could end up with, um, this could easily have been without good detergent. And then that would mean, actually that could mean that the G was in the middle, but you could, without, could take a letter away. So if you count this up and realize you've got too many letters, look for something like without or something cut short, and it might mean remove a letter from something to get back down to the number of letters you need. But this one was very simple, about good, so you have the G in the middle, that develops around the outside, and you see how there's no difference between those two words in terms of how the clue functioned. The clue just spanned the whole thing. But that is a very simple example of how two types of clue can come together. And that happens more often than not. You're quite likely to see different functions brought together into a clue than, than something just be one. Anagrams occasionally, I think, stand alone more than the others. But generally, you're going to see two or three different things going on in a clue. And yes, it is pure trial and error to work out which one is going on. And some conventions, as I've said before, good could suddenly represent something else because setters know you're going to think of a G and then you'll be wrong and they'll laugh somewhere deep in their setting caves. But um, very simply, don't worry about two words. Be aware that different things can play into the same clue and just keep breaking it down until you get there. Happy solving.